What's up, barbecue family? It's Joe Mill here with Killer Miller Q, and today we're getting back on this Green Mountain Grill. I'm gonna show you a little something to do with your leftover turkey. Today we're gonna be doing a smoked turkey pot pie. Let's go. cut the music you know what time it is let's put together this nice and savory cajun smoke pot pie you are looking at the ingredients i went with an easy route today i thought about turning it up like normal and uh really doing everything homemade maybe we'll do that next time but i figured let me grab some things i know everybody after thanksgiving you've been cooking all of this time you probably don't want to have to put in too too much work and you're looking to be able to get there and put this uh leftovers to bed so pretty much these are the ingredients we're going to be using i got about three uh cloves of garlic about three-fourths of a yellow onion a nice little pinch of and a dash of salt and pepper. We got some uh, fresh parsley that's gonna be going in as well as a little bit on top for garnish. I'm going the easy route yet again to get us nice and creamy on the inside. Now you can pretty much go with any cream you want. I'm gonna be using cream of onion today. We'll be using a little bit of that chicken broth. I usually like to go with a little bit less sodium just since it, uh, you know, you don't want it to be too salty and that way I can kind of adjust the salt to my own flavor taste. Obviously, I went with the pie crust instead of making my own. Something nice and easy that you can go grab at your local grocery store. These usually come out great, so don't even worry about it. Good old-fashioned cast iron skillet. We'll make sure we got that nice and oiled up with a little olive oil. Come with a little butter over the top of that. And then the star of the show is that Cajun turkey. If you didn't see last week's video, I'm going to make sure I put a link to that up top so you can see how we got to that. We are looking at a little over two pounds of... Uh, a little bit of mostly uh, dark and a little bit of white meat that's in there. Just kind of just all broken up, no skin. And uh, let me get to it. All right, so let's get this thing started. First things first, I got my oil pan. Got a couple pats of butter, about three tablespoons. We're going to get that going on medium heat. Take out those pie crusts. We want to get them coming up to room temp. They was in the refrigerator. They probably only going to take about 10 minutes or so. Already got the grill coming up to temp. And basically what we're about to be doing is we're going to be sauteing these onions. So we're going to get them out and in here and I'm going to let them go for a while. And with this wooden spoon, I'm just going to keep it moving. We want these to get nice and soft. But before they get there, after we give them about, I don't know, four minutes moving them around over this medium heat, you should smell them getting nice and fragrant pretty quick after the first couple minutes. We're gonna come with that garlic over the top for a quick second. We don't want that to go too long so we don't burn that. And then after about that four minute mark, they're not quite translucent, but you can see they starting to brown a little bit. Still smelling great. Now we're gonna come in with these three cloves of garlic and move that around. And this won't take long. Tell you it's amazing. A little butter, a little bit of onions, a little bit of garlic. As soon as that becomes fragrant, that garlic only needs about a minute. Keep it moving so it doesn't burn up. So that's ready to go. I got to show y'all one of my like one of the key ingredients. You gotta have that bag of frozen vegetables. Some people just go with uh, straight peas and maybe peas and carrots. I like getting the uh, mixed vegetables. I like my green beans in there and everything too. So now we're just gonna kind of mix that around. And this won't take long. This is part of my view. I work with two hands. So I'm gonna move this around just a little bit and get everything nice and coated. Looking good, smelling good. Next thing we're gonna do is come with that chicken. Like I said, we got a little over two pounds. Now I'm gonna mix that all around in there. Or excuse me, two cups. Mix that all in there, get everything nice and incorporated. Yes, yes, let me get you in there close. Now you're starting to smell that Cajun come up out of there. That garlic is kicking, the onions, that butter. Keep in mind, when you move this, you don't want to tear up all your vegetables. Get up under there, we just flip it over, okay? That's how we're going to mix this up. So now that we got everything nice and incorporated, we're coming with some of this 
cream of onion. Remember, you can do cream of mushroom if that's what you like. Cream of chicken, any cream you want. Obviously, we could have made something from scratch, but we're gonna start here. It will be nice and creamy. Let's mix this up. All right, so it should look something like that. Now keep in mind, this is all to the eye. So one thing I know is I'm not creamy enough, but I can smell and starting to see that some of that's starting to touch and catch a little bit on the bottom. So we're gonna add a little bit of that chicken broth. I don't wanna get it too watery, but uh, all of these vegetables and this other uh, can of soup is gonna soak that right up. So now let's mix that up. All right, it's starting to come together nice. So now we're coming with our other can of this cream of onion. And these are the smaller cans, so I mean, if you use one big one, ugh, you'd probably be good. This is just a little, um, where we at? A little 10 and a half ounce. I know a lot of times, yeah, go ahead and focus in on that. A lot of times you might see the 14. Yeah, I didn't want to give you a focus, but uh, trust me on that one. So that's a smaller can. I'm going to mix this up, and we'll see if we need to add a little bit more broth. All right, we looking nice and creamy. This isn't too, too bad. I'm gonna add just a little bit more of the uh, chicken broth, mainly because you know this still gotta cook down a little bit, so I don't want it to be too dried out, but I do want mine nice and creamy because I hate mine to be runny, but uh, I like being able to see that. Right, we got a nice sticky consistency, so just a little bit more. We mix that all in there, and we should be good to go. And we can go ahead and cut that heat. I almost forgot, before we cut that heat, let's mix in that little pinch that we had of that salt and pepper, as well as a little bit of parsley that we adding in. This is purely to your own liking, but I like a little green in there. Now let's mix this up and we'll cut that heat. Finished product, that's ready to go. So at this point you want to taste this, see if it's where you want it to be. Hopefully it should be around a little more runny than you want it to be when it's done. But remember, it's not going to cook that long. We just browning up some uh, pastry at this point. And this is all cooked stuff for the most part too. So this won't take too long at all. So taste it. As long as you up the flavor. My salt and pepper was alright. If anything, I might add a little bit of Cajun to this just to add on a little bit more of that Cajun flavor. But more than likely, I'm going to go ahead and leave it alone. Take this, put it to the side. We want this to kind of cool down a little bit. And now let's get over here and work on this crust. Hey team, I want to jump in here real quick and let you know thanks for following along on today's cooking. If you are new to the channel, go to that bottom right corner, take a second, subscribe, check out some of the other videos that you've missed. And for everybody else that's been here, make sure that you follow me on IG, Facebook. I'm trying to get to the TikTok. And anywhere else you see me, come find me. And let's get back to the work. All right, so while that's hanging out, Pit's already coming up to, uh, to temp. You know we got the Green Mountain out there with them Costco pellets blowing. Pretty much I did end up hitting it with just a little bit more of this Cajun uh, rub from a uh, rib rack. Same thing I used on that turkey. Um, again, make sure you check out that video if you haven't. Now we're going to get into these pie crusts. They've been sitting out probably a good 15 minutes, so they've unthawed. I already got one that's here. All we're going to be undoing is I'm going to unravel this all the way out. And it's pretty easy. Just take your time and be nice to it for what it's worth. Pardon my reach. I'm gonna do this just one-handed a little bit so you can at least get an idea. You're gonna open that all the way up, and then I'm gonna be laying that right over the top of this uh, skillet here that's already uh, oiled up. So I got it halfway on. I want to show you a little technique of what I do. Obviously, you can put this thing out flat, get your rolling pin, add a little bit of extra flour, and roll this out to be a little bit bigger. Basically, I want it to basically come up basically to the top. I mean, it could have a little overhang, which would be nice, but I'm okay if it at least comes up to the top. You see where I pretty much stopped? All I end up doing is I pull it tight, and then I just push it down lightly, and it'll stretch on its own. And from there, I can get it up to where I want it to be, start to get this flat, and we're going to work this all the way around until I get all the way back through. And we should look something like that. So we pulled it up just about to the edge, maybe a little overhang. And then uh, make sure you push down in these corners so that you don't have that lip down there. Now pretty much all I'm going to do is come through. Give me some holes in here to help it uh, cook all the way through. It's just a little tip to get you some nice and crispy crust at the bottom. A lot of times people wonder why they got the soggy crust, but we got to cook this a little bit before we get everything in there. That's going to end up making it more soggy. 
And then, nothing too crazy. All right, that's good enough. The next thing that we're gonna do, is we got like another tablespoon of that butter that we melted. And we're just gonna take a quick second to brush this all down on the inside. All the way around. Give it a little color. Get some more of that buttery flavor on the inside. We already got the uh, green mountain up to temp at 350. I'm gonna finish this out and we'll be meeting you out there and we'll throw it on for 10 minutes. All right, all right, looking good, nice and buttery. We at 350, chilling. Let's get this green mountain open. 10 minutes, nothing crazy. All right, 10 minutes later, got that in. You can see why we put them holes in. You can still see those little bubbles like to creep up. A couple little areas that slid down. Not too big of a deal. I'm not too, too worried about it. But um, definitely if you want to go ahead and, like I said, roll out that bottom crust, you have a little bit more fold over in the end or in the beginning, and um, that probably wouldn't happen so much. So next thing we're going to do is go ahead and add in the filling. There we go. So we got that in, patted it nice and flat. Remember, you don't want that to be any taller than your actual rim of your pan. And um, in the end, I want to actually be able to kind of tuck these uh, edges down with the other piece. So pretty much you want to try to stay up underneath it as well. So the next thing we're going to do, slide back over here. Let's open this one up and get it unthawed. And we'll put it right on top. And I'll show you how we lock it now. All right, so we got that unrolled. We got that on top. Now pretty much what this is what we're going to be doing. When you lift this back, we're going to be going to that layer. And I want to tuck this top layer underneath. And give me a little pinch just so it all connects all the way around and then we'll crimp this thing together all right we got it together not the prettiest thing in the world but uh not too too bad at the end of the day basically went ahead and pinched those babies on the other side definitely probably should have made head and um ironed that out uh, the first time rolled it out on the bottom layer just so i would have a little bit more to play with but uh this is gonna come out great this is what we need to do next we got it on top we got everything all pinched and locked together a uh, couple last things we want to cut some air slits in there so i'm just going to make kind of a star um just to kind of let this thing breathe a little bit we got one egg that we went ahead and uh blended up pretty well and we'll be giving it a little egg wash and wiping it down and then we'll get it with a little bit of finishing touch with a little bit of sea salt on top and we'll be ready to go ahead and throw it right onto the smoker all right this baby will be glistening that egg wash will help it give it some beautiful color Keep it nice and moist. Give it that little bit of shine at the end. The last thing that I want to do since we're doing a nice and savory Cajun style turkey pot pie is we're going to hit it with just a little bit of that sea salt on top. And this is all ready to go. All right, so we got this baby out here. We still at 350. Uh, let's get this open. Thing don't look that bad. I mean, I ain't no baker or nothing, but hey, we're going to be all right. Sit that right over there. You see we got those slits in there so we can breathe a little bit. That nice egg wash on there. All right, it should take roughly eh, 20 minutes or so. We really just browning off the top, but uh, we'll come back and check it out. All right, I've been peeking at it a little bit. We about 21 minutes in. Getting close, almost there. Brown it up nicely. I'm gonna give it a rotation. All right, we have 37 minutes. Right, we getting there we starting to get some brownness it's cooking nice and slow we over here in the skillet i did give it a turn so i'm not too worried about it keep in mind normally they want you cooking this pie custard around 400 425 i only wanted to do 350 let it get a little bit of smoke in there i'm not in no rush everything gonna come together so it's a little past the hour mark and you can see we almost there you see why we cut them slits in there you see all that good bubbling coming up out of there got to give it a little bit of room to breathe I want to get that a little bit more brown, gave it another 180 turn, and uh, it should be ready to work, or a 90 degree turn, and it should be ready to go. Maybe another 5, 10 minutes. We are finally back, still dialed in at 350 over here on this green mountain. It has been nearly an hour and a half. I don't know what the hell I was thinking when I told you 20 something minutes, I kind of forgot about the fact that I was putting it at 350. As you can see, we are bubbling and stewing, but this baby looks great. Look at that color. That egg wash gave me a little bit of that. Obviously, with this cooking so long, this is going to need a while to cool off. You 
can see how liquidy that looks. So this baby is hot to try. So uh, I'm. Gonna, this is pretty good for me as far as color. I could go a little darker, but I don't want to risk, risk the uh, chance of making my bottom dark. You know, we in this skillet, so it's gonna still keep cooking for a little bit when we take it out. So I'm about to pull this out. We're gonna let this sit at least in half an hour, and you know what's up. We're gonna taste this. All right, team, I'll bring you back in here up close and personal. And we're going to attempt to uh, get this thing carved up. It has sat for, man, it's been at least a half hour. This thing was piping hot, though. You've seen it was bubbling just a minute ago. Came out looking pretty good. Now you understand why we need to put them slits in there. This thing's going to have to breathe with all that air that got to come out of there. And then, um, like I said, if you would have made that bottom crust a little bit bigger, you get a little bit more to flap over to kind of get it more pretty on the ends with the crimping. But uh, I like what we working with. We smelling good. Oh, yeah. We got a nice amount of time to kind of cake back up. Pardon my reach as I sneak in here to get me a little bit of this served up. I can already tell this is nice and flaky. And of course, in true fashion, I forgot my bowl. So let me go grab a little saucer or something to throw this in, a little bowl, and then uh, I'll let you see the rest of it. All right. Pardon my shaking a little bit. Got my little saucer. Woo wee. Look at that nice and pretty. Get you a little bit of a side shot in the club. Uh, nice and flaky. You see what that egg wash do? I'm gonna get you some good light here in a second. So you can check this thing out. But uh, there we go. Give you that nice sheen. Get that little bit of salt on there just to give you a little bit of different uh, flavor to go on there. This is going to come out nice and hearty. Oh, man, I can't wait to taste this. The smells is, is incredible coming up out of here. You can smell that creaminess along with all of that good Cajun from that smoked chicken that we added on. And the one thing that you can kind of see in here is we didn't do no sticking on the bottom. And that little bit of crust that we got is a little more done, not so mushy. You know, you got all this wet stuff you adding in on here. But uh, this is exactly what we was looking for. Another good eating. So another way to break that turkey down so you ain't stuck with eating all nothing but pizzas. All right, let me flip this around. And you know I got to taste a little bit of this. It's right here that come to me. Mmm. Woo. All right, let me flip you around. All right, so we got it all together. You didn't see what we working with. Egg wash gave this thing a beautiful color. Overall, my smell and everything flavor-wise is coming out great from that Cajun turkey that we added in here. Uh, definitely make sure you check out that video if you ain't see how we came up with that turkey. But keep in mind, you can do the same thing with a chicken pot pie or you can make your own chicken pot pie, grab a rotisserie out the grocery store or something like that. Want to show you the easy way on how to get this done just so you got an option on what you can do with some of that Thanksgiving turkey that's gonna be laying around here in a week or two. With that said, let's get into the taste. Before I do, shout out to my family, shout out to my boys over there at Black Smoke Barbecue and all my people that's always following along. Let's go ahead and dig in here for a taste. I'm looking forward to it. After an hour and a half, we got some good smoke in here, I know. Cheers. Mmm. That's perfect. Comfort food at its finest, I'm trying to tell you. That right there is fire. Always been somebody that I love corn since I was little, but I always liking them pot pies. Them green beans give it a nice little something something in there along with them peas. Hey, super easy. A little bit of prep. After that, throw it in the oven. I put it on the smoker to give it a little extra flavor. You can't taste this smoke in there, but at the end of the day, knock this thing out. Take care of the family. Like always, I catch y'all in a week. Peace. Had to bring you back. I forgot to show you something. Look, hey, you can definitely make your own crust, but man, this crust is so flaky. Look at that. So doughy. And notice my bottom ain't all mushy. Come on now.